All right, guys, welcome to CJ Farms. This is Justin, and uh, I'm down here at one of our leases today. Uh, I'm going to pick up those two heifers that I bought from mom and dad this last winter and uh, get them up to the, uh, to the ranch there. Uh, they're ready to go out and uh, get bred. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to we're bringing them up, and then uh, we got some uh, other cows there that we want to AI, and so we're going to synchronize them and all that other good stuff. Um, so I'm also going to synchronize these two, and once they are in a uh, in a visual heat, um, I'm going to take them on over to uh, Calvin and the girls, and uh, also in this video, I'm going to take a lick tub out to them and uh, give you guys a little bit of an update on them. There's a few of them that have gotten a little bit thin. I moved them over to a new pasture, and I think that grass just, um, I think that grass was just waterlogged, um, or just doesn't have the, the same nutrients that uh, like dry land grass does. Um, it's just a totally different kind of grass. And so a couple of their, a few of them, their condition has uh, dropped off a little bit. That's why I'm putting that lick tub out there hoping to bring in some more nutrients and stuff So I'm gonna take you guys with me for that and uh, show you guys uh, Show you guys the progress or the end the process and uh, Hopefully we can get them back on track. Um, it's August 25th today or 26th um, so Yeah with that you guys I'm gonna go set up these panels and then we're gonna get these heifers moved in Alrighty, we got them up here into this little holding pen. I'm gonna do my best to uh, separate everybody off except for this red one here right in front of us and then that baldy calf that's in here. Those are those are both mine. They gotta go, uh, gotta go home today. So I'm gonna try and get the rest of these guys out of there. Um, they're the only two heifers over here. Everybody else is steers. We're kind of grass finishing them, I guess you could say. And uh, this is a perfect place to do it. Um, there's 20 acres. Um, can be flood irrigated, but we really don't irrigate it. Um, with the number of cows out here, there's no real need to. So anyways, we're gonna get these guys moved. Alrighty, we got the boys out of here. 
all we have left are my heifers. So I'm gonna let them through here. We're gonna get them loaded up there. And uh, yeah, this is the first time I've loaded out of here uh, by myself. So we're gonna see how all this goes and uh, hopefully they don't create too much of an issue. Usually we have more people here. And I brought over three panels because that's what it takes to make a good alleyway off of that. No, I kind of forgot that there was supposed to be a gate here and uh, there hasn't been a gate here since we've been leasing it. So I had to move one of our other panels over here. So I've only got like a two panel alleyway. So I'm hoping I can use this fence line to kind of direct them in there and hopefully be able to uh, get them loaded. I'll close that last panel down on them. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this goes smooth and uh, we'll get these guys moved in. Alrighty, that uh, <laughs> that went about as smooth as I could ask for. I literally opened up the red gate over there, and uh, the red, I think it was the red one, she came walking up and literally almost loaded up herself. But uh, yeah, we got them in there. So now I just gotta load the panels back up and uh, we'll get headed out, head home. And then all I gotta, then I gotta drop the trailer and uh, go grab the uh, mineral tub I was talking about. I gotta go to the feed store, so. Yeah, anyways you guys. Um, I'll get these panels loaded and I'll get back to you when we uh, start heading out. All right guys, we made it. Come on, girls. Just gonna let them out into that, into this other corral here. That way they can get some water. All right, guys, heads up. This thing squeaks really bad. Come on. Good girls.
All right, guys, we made it out to the cows. Like I was saying, uh, we moved them into a different pasture. So that pasture way over there was where they were up till uh, mid-July. And then moved them into here. And uh, they've been doing pretty good. They got these two pastures that they can go into. Um, the horses don't bother them. There's a pretty deep creek that goes across. So anyway, yeah, we're going to drop this tub off and then uh, hang out with these guys for a little bit. guys so here's a handful of them like I was saying uh, so this here number eight she's probably the worst looking one of the little group um, and she doesn't look horrible um, she's thin yes but uh, that's also why we're laying out this mineral tub like I said they got plenty of grass out here this side's a little thin just because it's um, like the dry grass if that makes sense um, but I'll show you the grass over here that they're in. But first things first, I'm going to show you guys this tub. So this is a Crystalix HE20. And it's basically just a uh, nutrient tub. Um, I got a little calculate right there on the label, but um, yeah. So it's got tons of different things in there that's going to help out with their nutrients. Uh, maybe help this here, number five, slick off a little bit better now. And uh, yeah, it's got some good stuff in it. This this side of this creek isn't isn't that same kind of grass. This is a different type of grass here. I'll take you guys across the uh, creek here. But the calves look great still. The calves are still looking really good, and they're gaining every single day. I still have to band the bulls. We're gonna be bringing them home in a little bit. Hey kids. Hi. Yeah, so here's this creek. Like I said, it's a pretty deep creek. Hi 23. Like I said, they aren't looking horrible. You know, they're just looking a little bit lacking. That hence the reason for the tub. This is the grass that they have. It's a thicker leaf here. And uh the leaves are still up to my knees, which is still a pretty good, pretty good amount. I'm gonna get these guys to clean this up, and then once they get done cleaning this little area up, I'm gonna take them out to um, some pastures for fall grazing. That's my plan for this winter, um, fall winter grazing. Um, I don't have enough hay. Mom and Dad don't have enough hay, and hay prices are still going up, even though they're at $400 a ton. Um, it's pretty rough out here for for people in our shoes and uh, you know it is what it is I have my own have my own ideas and opinions and comments about that but um, bottom line is you got to do anything possible to get these cows through the winter so trying to get them to eat this as long as possible and then we'll take them out to some fall grazing winter grazing areas um, gonna manage graze them on hopefully some uh, on some uh, alfalfa hay fields uh, we'll see how that goes gotta find some first to lease and then go from there yeah this stuff is still really good grass um, it just doesn't have the nutrient impact as 
the grass on the other side of that creek does just because I think this is more of a wet bottom. So it's got a little bit more of a, uh, a wet grass. We got a, a little group of cows over there already digging in to their mineral tub. This is the first tub that they've seen like this because I've used those tubs before, but just for a regular dry mineral. Now this stuff's a little bit different, obviously. Um, so they got that. Hey calves. Like I said, the calves are doing awesome. They are looking really good. Staying nice and plump. Number 10, um, I've had troubles with her keeping weight ever since I got her. So if there's a year that I have to cull, she's gonna be one of the ones that are gonna be cold first. Um, just cause I don't really want those types of genetics. Um, it'll just make it hard for uh, drought years like this, uh, or when years are, when years, uh, or on years when grass is limited. Um, like if I lose a lease or something like that, or if uh, we don't get enough hay put up this year, we got a bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, hay prices, um, the drought year, we didn't get enough put up. Um, we're coming in for a third cutting on our alfalfa um, after is it Labor Day or Memorial Day in September? I don't remember, but after uh, the next holiday that week after we're gonna go cut the alfalfa field. I'm gonna take you guys down there uh, soon, show you guys what we're doing. We planted some millet in there, um, but I didn't video that. Um, we got the second cutting off. I don't think I filmed any of the second cutting because I already have, I'm already backed up with hay videos. I'm gonna get this video out to you guys as soon as possible. So at least by Friday of this week, this video will be out. Following that is going to be all the power station uh, haying videos. Um, that's what I've been working on the last few weeks. Um, it's a long video, and that's what's taken me the longest to get it ready. Is just the sheer length. Um, so, yeah. But for the most part, everybody, like I said, is looking good. They're digging into that tub, which is good to see. Very happy to see that. Like I said, they're not lacking on grass. I mean, they have... This side's a little thinner. Um, they still have stuff that they trampled. They can pick off of that if they want, or they can leave it and it'll help grow uh, for next year. Um, yeah, they have plenty of grass. They're not short anything, um, except for the nutrients. And I think with that nutrients, like I said, this number five here, she'll uh, slick off a little bit better. Um, I do have to get garlic over here. The flies are kind of ramping up a little bit here and even at home. Um, for some reason in the last week, there's been a huge fly hatching in our valley, I think. Calvin's doing good um, with those two heifers I brought after we get them synchronized, I'm gonna drop them off. And then uh, I'm also gonna hang out here for a little bit and see if he pays attention to them. Uh, mainly because I haven't seen him take any real uh, activity towards the cows, but at the same time, I haven't seen any of the cows in heat at all or mounting one another or anything like that, any signs of any heat. So I'm hoping Calvin uh, got everybody, or for the most part, most of everybody. It's always uh, a little bit stressful for me putting out a new bull into any herd. And uh, this is the first time I've had a new bull and the first time I've had a new herd. So kind of makes me a little bit nervous, um, but with the way everybody's acting, I don't, I don't think any of them are left over. And like I said, some, some of my cows, they look absolutely phenomenal, like number 11 here. She looks really good, slicked off, everything. So it could even just be a totally different uh, genetic in the ones that are looking a little thinner. Um, I can even go back and look at my records and compare tag numbers and see if there's any common denominator there. Yeah. Anyways, you guys, with that, please excuse the uh, rambling in this video and uh, yeah I'll check in with you guys uh, we're gonna be doing I'm gonna try and do weekly updates with the herd uh, that way I can document for not only myself but also for you guys showing you guys what works for me what didn't work for me 
Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So with that, you guys, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video.